Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Blender Shader Nodes. Today, I'll be teaching you how to make this gummy, sparkly sugar cube effect, and I will be giving you an overview on how I made this scene. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's pause the animation and add in a new cube. Let's scale it down and bring it over to here, rotate it a bit. That seems pretty good. And now let's give this cube some bevel. So to do that, let's add in a bevel modifier, turn the segments up to around four. That seems pretty good. Let's set this shading to smooth. And to fix this little normal error that we have here, let's turn on harden normals and auto smooth as the error tells us to. And as we could see, it's just a little bit of an error, but it helps whenever you, you are using the bevel modifier. Now that we have that, we could go and add in a new material. There we go. And for this material, let's add in an RGB node, RGB node, so that we could hook this up into the base color and the subsurface color at the same time. That will become important later. Let's change the color to around, to an orangey color. Around there seems pretty good. Let's turn up the brightness. What we want to do next is turn down the roughness to around there. I think that's pretty good. And now we could get to actually making the sparkly effect by editing the normal input. So to do that, let's add in a Voronoi texture. We want to set this to 2D so that's faster and have the input be the UV map. Now cubes automatically have a UV map, so if you are setting this to another object, make sure it has a good UV map. So as we can see, we have this working quite well. We're gonna be using the color input and we wanna set the scale of this to around 500 so that we get nice little sparkly effects as we can see here. So to do that, let's input the geometry normals right here. And to edit this, let's add in a mix RGB node set to linear light. So let's put that right there and have the color input right there. And if we hook this up to the shader, we can see that it is working, but we're getting these kind of ugly darker bits right here. To fix that, just turn up the subsurface scattering amount right here. And with subsurface scattering, as we can see, right here, the edge is very harsh, very not soft at all. But if we turn this up, it, it gets quite a bit softer. And if I were to set this to white, we could see the effect quite a bit more. Here, it's very harsh. And as we do this, it gets a lot softer. So let's set this to 0.6. That's pretty good. And if we set this back to orange, we could see that looks very similar, pretty much the same to what we have right over here. Yeah, there we go. And that's basically the entire effect for the sugar cube. So with that done, uh, let's do a little overview on how I did these nice shadows. Now it looks like there are leaves here, but there are not. It's just a noise texture up here, as we could see. This is it. That is blocking a sun lamp. So if I were to rotate the sun lamp right here, we could see, boom, it's just a shadow caster. Now, in cycles, you could do this just by applying a noise texture or something like that to the sun lamp, but in Eevee, we can't do that. So I just put a plane with the texture on top of it. And make sure with in Eevees, make sure you turn on alpha clip for both the blend mode and the shadow mode for this to work correctly. And that's basically the entire effect for the shadows. Let's see what's next for the floor. Um, it's just a standard wood parquet for base color, uh, roughness, and normal. I plugged those into principled BSDF with a little bit of displacement, as we can see, a little bit of geometry. I set the geometry to way higher with a lot of sub uh, subdivision surface modifiers, but it ended up lagging my machine way too much, and it wasn't. It didn't really add too much to the scene. So that's pretty much it for that. Uh, for this metal material, as we could see, it's just this kind of texture, noise texture, set the roughness to 6.5, set the color ramp to something like that, and set the metallic value to 1. It makes a very nice metal effect, good for background set dressing. Okay, what else? Um, for the scene, I turned on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, and motion blur. As we could see, we can't see it in the viewport, but if I were to render this, we get very nice motion blur, which as we can see, this scene rendered in 1.15 seconds at 1080p. 
which is a big plus when using Eevee. If you can get your scene to look right without the fancy indirect lighting that Cycles has, it gives you a lot more time to uh, experiment and stuff like that. So yeah, that's basically that. For the animation here, this is hand animated, but one tip that I can give you is use the cast modifier to make your uh, character a lot more squishy. So if I delete the, the driver that I put in there, there we go. With this, when it bounces, it'll squash like that. And when it stretches, it'll stretch like that. And I have a driver hooked up to make it so that whenever I scale this on the Z-axis, it'll either squash or stretch and all that good stuff. But yeah, it was a very nice animation to work on, which you can see on my Twitter account. Be sure to follow that. And my Instagram account. Be sure you follow that as well. And yeah, for the eyes, they're just, you know, very standard eyes. Uh, just a plane with solidify, subdivision surface, all that good stuff. A little bit of cast as well, so that follows the mesh of the original object. And yeah, that is basically the entire effect. Did I miss anything? Oh yeah, the camera's animated by hand to follow the animation a little bit. This was made by a 1 by 1 aspect ratio, so that's why it looks a little weird at the moment. Why it looks like the animation's cut off a little bit. And yeah... Uh, the sun lamp is set to 100. I think that might be a little excessive, but for this scene it worked. Uh, the environment texture is set to the courtyard.exr, which you could see in the look dev viewport right here. We could use like any one of these, but I used this one. Uh, you have to get in the blender, like the internal blender files, which is a little bit of a process, but I was able to do that. And it's a very good scene. Very nice. Very good environment. So yeah, that's basically the entire, a good general overview of this. Uh, if you want to see more of these styles of videos where I go over one of my art pieces and show you how it's done, be sure to comment in the comment section down below. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to check out my Twitter page, my Gumroad page, my Instagram page, and I think that's it. Be sure to like, subscribe, and uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video.